this is Blood Axe. Uh, we're at Coast Con 2022, uh, Coast Con 44 actually. Uh, and uh, with me, I have my uh, buddy Q. And we also have a very special guest, Miss KD Wood. Uh, she's an author of uh, young adult novels, a little bit older adult novels. No? New adult, I'm sorry, my apologies. New adult uh, novels, and I'm gonna turn it over to Miss Wood so she can explain about her um, her uh, her works. Thank you. Uh, I write paranormal romance, and it's classified as new adult because the characters are a little bit older. Uh, YA would be under 18, so these would be over 18. Um, and then I also write uh, contemporary romance, which is a little bit on the spicier side. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> I'll have to remember that word, contemporary romance, people. That is the K.D. Wood. <laughs> well, you know, I've heard cont contemporary romance does really well uh, of what I've seen. But I myself will make it a rare admission that uh, when I was younger, I read quite a bit of paranormal romance. I was hoping to learn something. And I think I did. So I got to ask, you know, what... What, what, how do you start into that particular genre of books? Because that just seems to be so specific that I've always been like, the first book, you know, what makes you write that first one? So the mythology for my books is not the typical shift or vampire, what you would think as paranormal. So all of my mythology comes out of New Zealand. And I haven't said this word in so long because I haven't been to cons. It's Maori people. And I hope I'm saying it right because my accent always messes it up. It's the indigenous people of New Zealand. So they have their own lore, their own mythology, their own creation story. It's very, very unique, uh, very element-based, earth, wind, fire, water, that kind of stuff. So um, my particular creature is taken from some of their mythology called the Tenfa. And... I'm not saying it right. Like, my accent messes it up every time, I, and I apologize because I don't want to offend the, the people of New Zealand at all. But uh, I spent 10 years researching all of their mythology, all of their creation story, and didn't really take from, just added to, you know, like uh, their particular story that I went off of. It ends very abruptly. Like, there's no what happened. There's no what happened to this girl, how did she end up, and where did she go after that? So I was like, oh, well, let me make that up. You know, let me figure that out on my own and see what happens. And that's where the basis for my books comes from. Hmm. That, that is fascinating because uh, whereas Blood Axe is our facts guy about logistics and all the celebrities, I am a huge mythology, and uh, that is a rarer mythology. So you've already caught my interest just because Stories that include that are like one of a kind. You just don't see them that often. So, and there you go. Already she wins points for like, no, this is not another vampire versus werewolf. You know, oh, would she go with the werewolf or the vampire? Like, no, we're getting into some real mythology. Answering questions with spiciness. <laughs> so we have to redo it. Do you want to ask me? We got to ask our question that Ms. Mulva Hill was not able to answer for us because she's a clean young adult writer snogging <laughs> so I'll, I'll let you do it so um i did want to uh, kind of touch back on uh because of the uniqueness of your of your works uh it's something that i've, I've commonly said to people who are in interested in getting into youtubing uh is that you have to either be knowledgeable about something that people want to know or have something interesting that uh, will gather their in their, their attention because just doing the same old, same old vampires, werewolves, I mean, there is a plethora of options out there that have been established for decades. But when you get into something brand new, oh, that's interesting. Because, you know, some people do like the elemental uh, and aspects of um, earth, fire, wind, water, things like that. I mean, look at The Fifth Element. It's one of the, the, one of the best movies from the 90s, and it was based on similar elemental concepts. So, there you go. Yeah. Bada, uh, big bada boom. Um, but I do have to ask, so how do you write your more spicy components of your works? Because uh, I, I got a really nasty look the last time I asked that question, so I'm hoping to get a, uh, a better answer this time around. Poor Jen, you're picking on her. I, writing spicy never bothered me. It's my favorite parts to write. And I end up actually making them too long lots of times. 
So my editing ends up being in the spicier parts most of the time. I, I don't have a problem with it. I, I love reading spicy books. I love writing the spice. And, it, you know, I, I don't have any limits with that either. So I'll just write whatever, whenever, however. I, I don't have a problem with it. So what's your inspiration for these things in your books? Oh, no inspiration. Uh, you, you literally have to have the characters tell you about that because if you start drawing from your own life, you will immediately get a red flag from a reader like, I don't buy this. I don't buy this. Anytime I have ever put real life in a book, mm -hmm. it is the one thing that the readers will red flag. I don't buy this. I don't buy this character doing this. And I'm like, dude, that really happened. That so happened. <laughs> but they will not buy it. They will not, they will not go with it. That's really interesting that you say that because we've seen a lot in, especially in film and, and, and TV where people or writers are just writing themselves into things and people check out. It's like, okay, this is not this character. This is not the way they behave. So it's, it's really refreshing to actually hear that, you know, you kind of immerse yourself into the mindset of the characters you're writing. And, you know, and, you know are they more submissive? Are they more aggressive? How do they interact with their partner and stuff? That's really kind of cool that, uh, that you're kind of pulling off of um, – whether it's, you know, your feelings about the characters or maybe even, you know, how do you want to progress them throughout your stories? Oh, yeah. To add on to that, the, the characters are telling you. And if you ever divulge and sort of regress back into yourself, your story will actually go flat. Like, it won't start moving forward and, and you'll, have to, you'll have to figure something else out because it ain't working after that, you right. know. So. Well, now for the very important question. We now know what you write. We now know your wonderful method. Now we need to know wh what you have out there and where to get it. So I have a paranormal new adult series um, that is available on all, on all retailers. And even in audio, I have a very wonderful uh, narrator out of uh, L.A. And she did all three books. She's fantastic. I couldn't have asked for a better narrator. And um, they're available on Kindle. Uh, the contemporary romances are actually in what's called Kindle Unlimited, which is a membership to, ki to Kindle. People can just get books and uh, yeah. We'll it's, yeah. So it's, it's a really well-known membership for people who use Amazon and buy books off of Amazon. So you can find them everywhere that way. Is there a, like a, what's the specific name of this paranormal series? So the paranormal series is Unwilling is the first book. Unloved is the second book, and Unboundless is the third book. And they have to be read in order, so they're a ARC series, not standalones. Of course, paranormals tell a story. That's why I like them. Some of them, honestly, I'll tell you something you may not believe. Even now, I occasionally read some of those, but it's just for the paranormal, because sometimes the story's so good that I'm just like, look, I don't care about this relationship, but I love the mythos of this book, and I have read some series uh, just for that, just because the mythos is that good. Well, what about places they can find you, like, you know, sites, links? Where can they find Ms. K.D. Wood? I'm on everything, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I just got on TikTok. I'm not great at it, but I am on there. Um, all the social media, all of that stuff, I, I'm, you can look, find me anywhere under my name. Mm -hmm. Initialize K.D. Wood. Mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, that's it. Well, everybody, as you know, we're here at Coast Con, Ms. K.D. Woods. Uh, has come to talk to us, and as you see, she has an excellent series. And honestly, I'm, I think I'm going to have to check it out, especially now that it's an audiobook for the Mythos alone, because I have not seen it. I've seen it in games. I've seen it referenced in the odd part of Dresden Files and stuff, but that, that particular Mythos, never seen a book about it, so I've got to at least go see. It's going to be 10 years, 10 years of research. I mean, at this point, like, hot or not, the story's got to be just amazing fantasy. So we would like to thank you for having us. Oh, wrong hand. There we go. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, and it was very nice to meet y'all. Thank you, Ms. Wood.